Steve Shelton. Um, I play drums in Confessor and, and Loincloth, with, which are both underground, very underground metal bands. Um, I'm 47 years old, North Carolina native, um, married for eight years, high school sweetheart. Um, I've always lived around here. Uh, once I bought my first drum set at the age of 17, I put down my pen and pencil because I thought I was going to end up being an illustrator at some point when I was younger. And it's been music, music, music ever since. Uh, sometimes for the best, sometimes it's probably held some other aspects of life back, but it's a passion of mine and, um, and I'm kind of known for having a, a, an abstract approach to playing drums, which is probably the whole reason that we're both here right now. <laughs> There was really no template for us. We were kind of, and there were no rules, which was, you know, kind of, kind of made things um, easy in some ways, but hard in others, um, just because, you know, you can go as, as far out as, as you want, but, you know, at some point you've got to say, wow, you know, I've actually got to memorize this stuff. So it took, it took a long time to write each individual song. I do feel like if we had been in a bigger market or, or a bigger city, there would have been bands competing for the same audience. And, and we didn't have to deal with that. We were able to do whatever we wanted and what turned us on happened to turn on a bunch of other people in town. And we were able to capitalize on that and create our own thing. There was no pressure for us to conform to anything um, or to try to compete with other bands. <laughs> come from, from work every day and sit on my steps and play my guitar and I would usually come up with something and I would bring it to practice or, I would, or Steve and I would get together, um, sometimes he had this drum set up at his house. We would, we would work through this riff and he would um, uh, kind of deconstruct it. He would, the riff never ended up like it was written initially, it was always flipped around and and turned inside out. I write a whole bunch of the transitions and um, I'm, I'm pretty good. If somebody has a riff that we all like, I'm really good at dissecting that riff and getting other riffs out of it by taking a little snippet and if you think of it conceptually as like putting it into a loop, I, I can create larger patterns out of small sections of other riffs. So you've got your A part, you need a companion part. I'm really good at, at, at sifting through little detailed pieces and, and coming up with those companion parts. kind of got suckered into going to this great big thing. It was supposed to be um, uh, uh, one of those all-day things put on by our local radio station in, um, I guess it was in Houston? Yeah, Houston. And it was supposed to be this big deal, thousands and thousands of people. Yeah, it'd be great. We had a water park, you can go slides, whatever, and hang out, it'd be awesome. 
So it was one of our very first out of town experiences. We went, we were all gung ho, and uh, the people we stayed with were pretty cool, had a good time. Uh, got to the water park, and there were maybe like 20 people <laughs> there to see the thing. So instead of being chock full of people who were starving for, for you know, interesting music, there were four or five families that were not interested in music in the slightest. Um, but we played. Um, my recollection is that we actually did a pretty good job. Um, the video somehow sounds pretty good. Um, and uh, yeah, I got, I got sunburned real bad before we were even done playing our set. Foreheads. It was just another gig for us. I mean, only it was outside at a waterside park playing on the the roof of the wave, where the wave pool was, and the audience was in the water, which is really odd. And uh, but you know, and we all got really sunburned. Um, I yeah, mean, I mean, we you know we we kind of th we uh, thrived on it. If people didn't like it, it, it excited us almost as as much as if people really liked it. Because um, you know we were just trying to nudge people, I guess writing the kind of music that you wish other people were doing. And that's exactly what Confessor has always done. And, and I've had this question before where I've, my response had been to, to some question somewhere that if other people were writing this stuff, we wouldn't have to. It would already be there while we were writing what we want to hear. Um, and in Loincloth's case, Tannen and I have such a kind of specialized, focused, Thing that we're shooting for that we don't hear anybody else doing. People are doing things that would kind of get lumped together in the same family, but nobody's really attacking it the same way we attack it. So it is pure adoration of, of what it is that we're shooting for. And you know, obviously there are other people who would do it better, but we dig. The thing that we get out of the music, the thing that makes us giddy at practice is, is so satisfying and so fulfilling that you know, it's like it's chasing the musical dragon almost. <laughs> the only way for us to, to, to get this is for us to do it. And we, we just, we, we love it so much. It's such a satisfying outlet for us. teach literature at, at NC State University. I'm sure we all have different ideas about why we are doing this. Uh, when, when Steve texted me a few years ago to ask if I would be willing to join the band, I, I didn't hesitate. Uh, you know, I'm, and I'm very busy with teaching, and then I have this whole other uh, form of music that, that I've been doing for a long time. And, uh, but it, it just never occurred to me to say no to that, because I, I knew what kind of pleasure is entailed in, in this project. So that's why I do it. It's, it's just, it's pure pleasure. I recorded and mixed Iron Balls of Steel. Uh, the debut full length from Lloyd Loth, uh, very happily involved with that record. Um, I mean, I, from what little we've spoken about it, I believe that Steve is composing these parts, you know, months and years before he's laying them down for posterity. There, you know, this is this is what this man hears when he walks around doing what he does throughout his day. You know, which uh, just I, it's I'm, I have infinite respect for his commitment to that, that thing that he's had in his head for all these years. You know, it's just, it's beautiful to me that someone would commit themselves so thoroughly to that and uh, stick to their guns and, uh, you know, let the world do with it, whatever it does, you know. Um, as far as I'm concerned, loincloth is, I, I, I like talking about and thinking about loincloth and Steve in terms of heavy, because I think they are truly a heavy band and truly, Steve is truly a heavy drummer.
So yes, this is what actually pays the bills. <laughs> Playing around in dirt, just like a kid. Typically, anytime we're riding on anything, unless I'm actively talking to somebody, um, or, or have some other thing in life that I'm thinking about, it's pretty much music that I'm thinking about writing. Um, it's just, I, I run it through my head all day long. How was Spain? Spain was amazing. So between um, playing with what's left of one of my favorite bands ever, um, they're now called The Skull, they're named after the second Trouble, Trouble record, which is called The Skull. Um, they were doing, as part of the festival, they were playing the first Trouble record, which is the album that had more to do with defining Confessor's goals as, of any band, even more so than Black Sabbath to be able to go back with both bands, which at this point in my life, these guys have been best friends for 25, 30 years. So we were surrounded by people who meant a lot to us and in a city that had that reflected a lot of lifelong inspirations. It was neat. It was overwhelming at times, I have to say. Plus having people who were coming in from all corners of the world specifically to see us, who had been waiting to see us their entire adult lives and never thought they'd have a chance. Uh, it was just a neat little gathering for people for whom this kind of music, for some, our music specifically, um, it was a real it was a seminal moment for a lot of people. And um, that was reflected in, in the conversations I had with people afterwards. And yeah, it was tough to contain your emotions. You just get overwhelmed. You don't realize how invested you are in something like this until it happens and you find yourself on the verge of tears several times just because you're meeting somebody who you know, that busted their butt all year long to save this money to come see you and you've been a source of inspiration for them for 20 years just like all these other things in the city have been a source of inspiration for for me um, yeah it was fantastic it was fantastic we'd go back anytime and we made some lifelong friends there the the people who put the the festival together were great and um, yeah I think uh, it was it was magical really for for a lot of people especially for me I'm glad I've never stopped doing it. I don't ever plan to stop doing it. And uh, it's uh, it's all about communication. It's all about sharing your ideas and, and hopefully running into other people that have similar ideas and similar inspirations. And it's an interesting energy and an interesting vibe to be able to feed off of other people, particularly having done this for so long, to run into people who have been inspired by what we've been doing for so long or for so much of their lives. It's it's something that you can't really explain to people but it's just really encouraging and makes you realize that there is a point to it all and it's not just the immediate gratification it's about making something that will last and is enduring that other people can enjoy and celebrate with their friends and you may or may not ever find out about that but I've been fortunate enough to, to run into people who have been inspired by what we've done it's great <laughs>